eight and sand. Over black, we hear a bell, a whistle, the hiss of brakes released, and the accelerating clickety-clack of steel wheels on a steel track. Title card, eight and sand. One, railway jargon, to throw sand on the tracks and throttle to notch eight, full power, for an uphill climb. Two, an old railroader's benediction for safe and speedy travels. Fade in, exterior train town, day. Tracking shot on the engine of a scale-rideable train. Jed, 60s, the engineer, rides atop the engine in a little cushioned seat, a long line of happy passengers straddling the miniature train cars behind him. The little train snakes its way through a rail-themed amusement park, revealing its treasures in a series of shots. A. Tots riding in little crates on a kitty train. B. Crowds milling about in a model train garden. C. Families taking pictures in front of a full-size historic steam engine and red caboose. Exterior train town, park center, day. At a crossroad in the park and apparently unnoticed by preoccupied park guests, Aliyah, five, spins in every direction, a look of fear etching across her features. America, 17, a name-badged park employee and Jed's daughter, kneels in front of Aliyah holding a flower balloon animal. She wears a silver locomotive charm around her neck. Hey, sweetie. Where's your mama? Aliyah shrugs. What's your name, sweetie? Aliyah. Aliyah? Oh, that's a pretty name. Mine's America. Like the country? I know, right? Would you like a flower, Aaliyah? You can actually wear it as a bracelet. May I? Aliyah nods, so America slides the balloon onto her wrist. Aaliyah! America and Aliyah look up to see Aliyah's mom approaching. You know better than to run off like that. I wanted to see the little trains. She takes Aliyah's hand and smiles at America. Thank you for staying with her. Of course. Now, you hold on tight to your mama's hand now, Aaliyah. And take care of that flower. Aliyah and her mom wave as they walk away. America's smile saddens. Exterior, train town, parking lot, interior, car, day. Close on a photo booth strip of novelty portraits stuck to a vehicle dashboard near the ignition. Each portrait features America on the left, a middle-aged woman at center, and a woman about a decade older than America on the right. Sadie, 27, the woman on the right, sits in the driver's seat, her hand on the key in the ignition, eyeing the photo strip. She cuts the engine. Exterior, train town, parking lot, day. Sadie stands and stares at the train town entrance, stealing herself for what comes next. She locks her car and enters the park. Exterior, train town, park center, day. As America twists a new balloon animal, Sadie's entrance catches her eye and she smiles. Sadie! Hey, little sister. They embrace. Sadie has a few inches on America. I told Daddy you weren't here till tomorrow. Decided I didn't want to hike after a five-hour drive, but I've got plans tonight anyway, so... Oh. Just wanted to say hi and make sure we're all set for the hike. America's eyes drift over Sadie's shoulder. So Jed knows where... America gestures behind Sadie, and Sadie turns to see Jed's engine approaching the exit platform. As Jed's passengers disembark from the train, he strolls over to America and Sadie. Sadrina. Hi, Jed. You down from Portland? Well, yeah, obviously. Sadie and Jed hug, but it's forced. Remember, Daddy, we're hiking in the mountain tomorrow. To mark the year. Right. Uh, honey, could, could you babysit the train garden for a few? Saw some boys throwing rocks, derailing the trains. Sure, Daddy. Well, uh, I have to... Sure. So, uh, I'll see ya. He returns to his engine. Sadie turns to meet America's gaze. What? America turns towards the model train garden. Sadie follows. What? You could apologize to him. Why should I apologize? He should apologize to me. I'm practically his daughter. Or his daughter. Well, step. America rolls her eyes. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Jed. How are you, you know, with everything? Exterior train town, model train garden, day. As they approach the model train garden, where several tiny tracks intertwine and intersect around miniature mountains and little villages, they see some boys getting ready to throw rocks. Hey! The boys scatter. America moves to reset the model trains that have been knocked over. So? America looks at her half-sister. That might be the first time you've asked. That's not fair. But accurate. You'll understand when you started a life of your own outside of train town. I miss you. 
I miss. I know. Me too. She looks at her watch. I gotta head out. Sure you can't come to dinner? Pizza night. As much as I'd love pizza with engineer sad sack, I'm same friends. But tomorrow you and I will have the whole afternoon together and mount an all to ourselves. Real sister quality time. She kisses America's forehead and squeezes her hand. I'll pack some cold pizza for you. Get it with extra olives. She waves and turns toward the garden exit. And don't forget to pack mom. Exterior rustic house, night. An old gray truck pulls up in front of a house surrounded by towering evergreens. Jed and America exit the vehicle with a pizza box and head into the house. Interior, rustic kitchen, night. America sets plates on the table and sits, opening up a pizza box as Jed walks from the fridge with a beer. I thought Sadie looked good. Jed sits and grabs a slice. I like what she's doing with her hair. Looks nice, don't you think? He drops his slice. You know, we forgot the red pepper. Jed starts to push away from the table, but America jumps up before he can. I'll get it. America walks to the cabinet and opens it. Jed swigs his beer, eyeing her. Do you think you and Sadie will ever see each other again? After I leave, I mean? She returns with the ground red pepper and places it in front of Jed, retaking her seat. Didn't you want any? After you. Another swig. I really hate when you push me like this. Fine. I'll take the pepper first. You know what I'm talking about. He takes the red pepper. I'm the only stable father Sedrine has had, but I can't force her to want a relationship with me. Catch. He tosses her the red pepper and she catches it. Is that what you'd say to Mama? A spark of anger flashes in Jed's eyes. America softens in response. Come with us to the mountain tomorrow. Jed shifts in his seat. He's almost squirming. We'd be a family again, and it would mean so much to- I can't climb that mountain without her. I'm sorry, I just can't. Daddy. Jed fakes a cough and stands. <coughs> Excuse me. He leaves America sitting alone at the table. Interior rustic living room, day. An urn canister sits on the mantel above a stone fireplace. America grabs the urn and places it in her backpack wedged between Ziplocs full of leftover pizza. She zips up and exits. Exterior mountain trail, day. America and Sadie use hiking poles up a steep trail through a grove of evergreens. Sadie leads. How did Mama react when you came out? I think she kind of always knew I liked girls, so my real coming out was when she found out I liked boys too. She gave me a pack of condoms and said, I didn't think I was ever going to have to do this with you, but here we are. I was 11. It was mortifying. (laughs) Like when she started adding scented condoms as stocking stuffers? No kidding. The saddest I felt over the holidays was when I poured out my stocking and no condoms fell out. God, our family. For other kids, Christmas smells like their mama's home cooking. For us, it's strawberry latex. (laughs) They laugh. Ready for a snack break? They lean against a pair of trees and America opens her backpack for the pizza. I kind of feel bad. Hmm? Mama hated cold pizza. She really did. They eat. You know, the first time she took me on this hike, I must have been maybe six, a yellow jacket stung me somewhere right around here. I begged and begged her to carry me back down, but she refused. She made me push forward. I cried most of the way up. But you made it. Exterior Vista Point, late afternoon. The girls reach the vista point and stare out at the horizon in silence. Then, I'm not sure if I remember the first time we took Jed on this hike, but I'm pretty sure I remember the first hike with all four of us after you were born. Mom had you on her back in one of those backpack baby rig things. I don't know how old you could have been. I was just thinking about the last hike. You know, before she got too weak, but just barely. It was Mama, Daddy, and I. You were in Portland. It hurts so much to watch our strong mama struggle to make it up to the top like that. But she made it. That was the day that she asked us the first time. She stood right here, pretty much, in this spot. She closed her eyes. and She took just a really deep breath, like she was breathing in all the world. And she said, this is where I want to be dust. Just like that. I want to be dust. Made Daddy sob and sob. But we promised her. America looks at Sadie. I wasn't there that time, but I was when we promised. And we did promise. I know you wish Jed was here, but he made his choice not to be. America nods. She slips off her backpack and kneels to open it. 
Gingerly, she removes the urn, stands with it between her hands, and faces the horizon. Sadie reaches out her hand and places it atop the urn. We lovingly commend our mother's ashes to the mountain, per her final wishes. She was too soon taken from us and too late laid to rest. Today, we let go for those who can't. Sadie turns to face America, placing one hand below the urn, gripping the lid with her other hand. They make eye contact and Sadie gives a slight nod. America takes a deep breath and nods back. Eight and sand, Mama. Eight and sand. Sadie tries to open the urn, but the lid won't budge. She grips it harder, but struggles. Give it here. She takes it from America and tries to dig her nails under the lid. Watching Sadie strain to pry open the urn with their mother's remains, America begins to shake and struggle to catch her breath. She panics. No. Sadie, stop. Please. Not this way. Not not like this. We, we need to stop. What is your problem? We can't do it this way. It isn't right. America, this is what mom wanted. We promised we would do this. I know. I know. And we will. But first we need to talk to daddy. Daddy needs to be here with us. You told him we were doing this. America's face says she didn't. America, you told him we were doing this? I wanted to ease him into it. So I invited him on the hike, but I didn't... I didn't mention the ashes. And even then, he couldn't do it, could he? He couldn't be here with us to even honor her memory. He refuses to acknowledge she's gone, America. He won't let go, so the rest of us have to live with a ghost. You think that's suddenly going to change? It could. It could. She starts prying again. Screw Jed's feelings. It's been a year, sister. We should have done this a year ago, and instead my mother's been sitting in this can in your living room. She was my mom a decade before Jed even knew she existed. He doesn't get a say about this. Not anymore. What about me, Sadie? Don't I get a say? She was my mother, too. Please, Sadie, stop! America charges at Sadie to grab the urn, but Sadie elbows her to the ground as the canister lid finally flips off and their mother's ashes spread into the wind. A long, horrible beat of absolute silence. Sadie throws the urn hard to the ground. You ruin this like you ruin everything! She stomps off back down the trail the way they came up. America lies stunned on the ground. After a moment, she pulls herself up. She steps toward the edge of the cliff. She stares down into the valley with a quivering lip. We almost wonder what she's considering. Finally, she lets out a wailing scream, as loud as a train's whistle. Exterior mountain trail, late afternoon. Sadie charges down the mountain, raging and sobbing. She stumbles on a root but rights herself. Then, losing control, she roars through gritted teeth and whips off her backpack, beating it against a large tree trunk over and over again, finally collapsing against the trunk, exhausted. Exterior Vista Point, Sunset. America is back on her knees. Slowly, her sobbing heaves subside, her breathing calms, and in the golden hour light, her face appears drained and exhausted. We hear footsteps as the sound catches America's attention. She quickly wipes her eyes and nose. From below the ledge, a woman hiker appears and climbs up to stand near America. She stops and pulls out a canteen to drink. She looks at America, looks around, and sees the sun will be setting soon. What's this kid doing out here alone? Oh, beautiful view, huh? Might if I sit here a minute? She doesn't wait for an answer. Sitting next to America, the hiker eyes the silver locomotive charm around her neck. Nice train. The hiker gestures at the charm. America looks down, touches it. That was me getting up the other side of this cliff. I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> but you made it. Hmm? Nothing. America's phone buzzes and she pulls it out. You getting a signal up here? Just enough for text. The text on her phone screen is from Jed. Where's your mama? She slipped the phone back into her pocket. They stare at the horizon. Ever read John Muir? My mama read me some. The darkest scriptures of the mountains are illumined with bright passages of love that never fail to make themselves felt when one is alone. She looks at America. That's my favorite Muir quote. Earth hath no sorrows that earth cannot heal. America and the hiker turn to see Sadie standing behind them. That's mine. The hiker looks back and forth between them, then stands. It'll be getting dark soon. You girls need any company getting back? Thanks. We've got it. In that case, be safe. She departs. Sadie sits next to America and wraps her arms around her sister. I'm sorry. America places her hand in Sadie's and squeezes. 
From behind their silhouette, we watch the sun dip low on the horizon and hear the accelerating clickety-clack of steel wheels on a steel track. Fade out. The end.